it's winnable um, because uh, that's probably, well, it will be the first time in my life when that, uh, the possibility of, you know, actually getting a, a over 50% for independence uh, has been uh, realisable. I think it is there, but I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's showing at the moment in the, the conventional opinion polling. Um, uh, I mean, and, and you've got to take that seriously. I mean, you know, the polls are not often wrong. Uh, they have been, uh, but, uh, but usually they give you a pretty fair guide and it's pretty consistent that there is a gap. So you have to take that seriously, but I do think that there, is, uh, there are a couple of factors here. Uh, one is a lot of the opinion polling, uh, well, some of it's done online. Uh, I think a lot of the people who will be voting in um, the referendum are not really spending their lives online, don't do that. I think a lot of the polling is, you know, done in high streets and in homes, but not necessarily in some of the, the schemes of Scotland where, uh, you know, there are people who are kind of outside, pretty much outside the mainstream, who are gradually being drawn in uh, through the Yes campaign. And, and I just think as well that the other factor is the kind of last minute thing. It sounds like clutching at straws and there may be some truth in that. But I think that when there's something as big as this, something as spectacular as this, that people at the last minute tend to just kind of say, look, I need to do this. You know, they need to just make a judgment and go. And I have always felt that there would be um, a deep and emotional element to this, which says, I don't care about the, the currency issue as such. Not that they don't care, but I mean, it's, it's just not forefront. It's not about how many tanks or submarines we have and all the type of, you know, the debate you have on Newsnight Scotland. I mean, it's, you know, that is for the chattering classes. I think there's a big, essentially working class Scottish vote which believes in Scotland. How they would articulate that Scotland is a, a you know, a moot point. But I think when the, if you like, a call goes to them to say, look, this is a vote for Scotland, I think a lot of those people do have what I regard as my own nationalistic impulse. And I think they'll turn out and I think they will be proud to vote yes. Again, is there enough of them? Well, there probably is potentially enough of them to do that. And I think it's a real possibility. And although we keep saying it's different from um, normal elections, the truth is that uh, you, if you look back to the last uh, Holyrood elections, there was a huge gulf. I mean, it's, uh, there were points where Labour were something like 20 points ahead. I think between 14 and 20 was a kind of fairly normal gap ahead of the SNP. By the time the election came, they were 20 points behind. I mean, that, that kind of shift is frightening because if people can do that in, in a, a normal parliamentary election, what are the possibilities in a one-off referendum? And I think nobody can predict that. And I, I, just, I think the no side feel that as well, you know, and obviously they're sticking quite rightly to what they see as the scientific opinion polling. But in the back of your mind, you've got to think that is a real possibility of a last minute transformative um, outcome. I think that disproportionately there'll be yes voters turning out. I think the commitment is, is on the yes side. That's pretty obvious from the way the campaign has gone. Difficult to get people on the no side um, at, public, at public meetings. The fact that they don't engage, the fact it's done in a top-down way, that it's run through the conventional media, there's hardly anything of any substance at all online in the new media, which tells you it's a much older, more conservative, small c, socially conservative um, voting block that they have. And I'm not convinced how serious uh, most of those people are about t actually turning out to vote no. Telling the pollsters, I plan to vote no is one thing, but actually saying to yourself, do you know what, I'll go out and vote for it, I think is different. So I think we're in a place which is uh, tense, uh, definitely exciting, it's a gripping story, it's the future of our nation. Um, and I think it, I just sometimes think it's really could happen. I think it's got a real possibility. If we're talking here about uh, the way people uh, are reacting to the debate and to each other, I don't think it's any different from what it ever has been. I mean, we talk about vitriol and it's toxic, etc. Well, yeah, there's a lot of truth in that. Why wouldn't it be? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with pointing at each other and saying, you know, you, you've got bad ideas on this or you're not a Democrat on, on that subject? What, what, I mean, that to me is just debate. 
The difference now is that that debate used to be amongst a self-selecting elite. It used to be done by the, the, the payroll politicians and the paid commentators. And the only way you got back at a paid commentator in, in those days was you wrote a letter to the editor and hoped it was published. And of course it rarely, if ever, was. That has completely been turned upside down. That is the big transformation, is what is now available to people, everybody. It's now democratised. Our whole political system has been democratised by the social media. It doesn't necessarily win votes, but it does engage people massively and it transforms ideas. You can no longer sit there and, uh, you know, I don't know, the Glasgow Herald and, you know, pont well, you can sit there and pontificate if you're a commentator I mean, and, you know, the, the, the guys uh, do that. But, you know, you just know that within an hour of it being published, someone somewhere will be blasting you to smithereens. And if you get something badly wrong, and we all do that, I do too, you get destroyed online. I just think that is, I think that's a wonderful addition uh, to our debate. I think we should not be afraid of that. And, and remember that some of these issues are massive. It's not just the, but, but the, but the future of the nation, it's also about things like nuclear weapons. I mean, I think that is a serious subject. I don't think that politicians should be allowed to brush that aside and, and just, you know, as Labour have done, as, as uh, uh, Jim Murphy has done, and kind of merrily declare, well, we're on board for this, you know, we think this is the right thing. Who, who, who did he consult? The Labour Party, the Labour members, the Scottish people? These are weapons of mass destruction. I mean, have a look at the moment what's happening in Gaza, blowing civilians to smithereens, and that's with conventional weapons. This is serious stuff, and it's a big part of our debate. And if you can't get passionate and angry about nuclear weapons, you shouldn't be in the debate at all.